Hello everybody. If you notice you do not see us, that is because today, instead of it being about us or masks or any of that, we're doing this. A play of Tiny Epic Western. We're going to play a few rounds of this, show you guys what's what with it. Instead of just explaining rules, we're going to play it as well. Um, because, you know, I see a lot of videos that just explain rules. But we want to show you the game. So first we went and set it up. And the basic setup here. Let's take a look at some of these here. You'll notice some of these cards like the saloon that you will see here. So let's take a look at our saloon. You will see here, uh, if we may. There we go. You'll notice our saloon. I don't know why. Like this is. There we go. Uh, and you will notice there is something on the porch already in the saloon, and the reason is when you set this up and you don't have a player here, we're doing a two-player, so you're going to want to go ahead and make this porch slot, it is a porch slot, available. You'll see an instant use thing there for somebody that is an instant wild of their choice, and then... The card there is something that they can use uh, as they want, and you'll notice in the upper left corner it tells you when that activates, and in this case, because it's an exclamation mark, that's instant as well. Um, the two main things with setting up your town, do not forget your sheriff's office. Again, gorgeous artwork on these cards. We were very, very impressed. As I said before, Gamelin Games does a really good job with this sort of thing. It is directly across. You will look across town here. And we'll travel across that and see the town hall. So there you see the town hall at the start of the game. Your industry tokens. Which are actually uh, nice hand-carved wood. And those are all three of them there, so you can see them. Thank you. That is Luna, who is playing this with me. Hello. Yeah, you may recognize Luna as the voice of Shelly. Luna is actually my fiance. Luna is helping me today. We're going to be playing this. And you'll notice here, this is important, that has a red card on it. You will notice here, the rest of these buildings have a blue card. The reason, guys, is... And this one, by the way, the courthouse is flipped over to blue, because that is me. I am blue. Uh, when you do set up, make sure that you... Let's take a look at a, a player card, shall we? You're going to want to set your player card up as so. So you've got your two little workers up here. Now you'll notice this guy is not up. He is only up for certain conditions. Um... This guy, the rancher, he has a special power that I really like. He can go and use special conditions at the beginning of the placement phase and pay to pop up that third guy and get him moving. Um, because this game is all about getting properties, getting points, and down here you'll see... This is your influence belt. You will have three influence tokens. I'm going to lay these out real quick so you can take a look. Again, these are wood, hand-painted. Um, looks like they did machine symbol work on them. It's very nice. You have your power token. You have your law token. And your money token, or gold. These start off at one. So after you pick... Whatever color you want to be, it doesn't matter, actually. Just because you pick a guy with a red background doesn't mean you have to be uh, red, which is one thing that I actually really liked about this. Um, then you got to make sure you place the wanted card in the center of town and your two bullet dice in the middle for duels. And you're going to volley for that card, which means it can, it can switch depending on who wins duels. So the object of the game here is that we're going to be going around and placing our workers every turn on buildings like this. Now let me show you a quick example here. You will see this one 
has a space here for these guys. Now let's take a look up here at the space and you will see there are two options. There is an instant and there is a wake and down there I'm trying to get all of it. Um, but let's zoom in a little more up here. You will see if I move them to the left that's an instant reward. I get the instantly. That's the safer bet. Even if I get dueled, I already grabbed that. So that's one power. If I wait, though, until the later phases of the game, after everybody's moved, and we are using cards, and I win that, I win two power along with two law. So it is a harder game in the spec that you have to kind of figure out what is worth waiting for, what is worth not waiting for, how do you want to play, do you want to play fast, or do you want to play um, where you're willing to wait it out and do things like that. Now, we both picked our characters. Um, Shelly picked the Gunslinger, and if I remember right, the Gunslinger's power is one that lets Shelly have an advantage if we do a duel, which is not good for me. One thing that's really cool I want to say on the back of every single player card, like this is another player card, guys, is you grab a second and they become a guide that tells you the hands of poker, what wins, what loses. Um, that's a little too close there, sorry. <laughs> Some iconography here for you tells you what things mean. But all in all, it is just a very handy guide to have. So we always use these and we set them right next to our player cards. And now, without ado, we're going to get started uh, with the game itself. Now, I am going to start. Uh, with what they call the first phase, which is the dealing phase. There so, is a chip. There is a chip here that is off table, so let's show you that. Woo! And actually, there's a little weight to this. Uh, this is either light plastic or clay. I feel like this is plastic. Um, but it's nice, nicely made. It's like casino quality. And the red cards, unlike the blue cards, are your poker cards. Now the way this is going to work is I'm going to deal these up. You can't see me dealing them, so. Dealing hands. Woo. So you're going to see me dealing these here. And then again, everything goes clockwise. So these will go up, face up, clockwise between the buildings. Now we cut this a little we'll tight. Start at the town hall. You start at the town hall. Everything starts at the town hall and goes clockwise in this game. Um, now, there are a few instances where they are not flipped. I like to put that card there. I'll deal two straight to Shelly. I deal two to me. Uh... We will call Shelly Luna. It sounds more western. And then we have one card you keep, one card you discard. So we have a discard pile. And we'll put the rest of the red cards right here. I don't know if y'all can see them, but I'm hoping you can there. I'm tapping them. And then our building cards, we're going to actually set right here. So those are blue building cards, those are poker cards, these are disc cards. So, sorry guys, we don't have a super zoom camera or anything. Now, the next phase of the game, because this game is played in six rounds and four phases, but as you can see, we've already done two of the four phases, so it's not that complicated. It sounds complicated, it's not complicated. The next phase, uh, because I'm the dealer um, and I go first, is the placement phase. And again, I have to decide where in the world I'm going to move. Um, oh, good guy. You can only normally buy buildings on a space you're on in a turn. Um, 
I'm actually going to go ahead and start shoot <laughs> this is a tough one but we're gonna start here at the courthouse which is my own building so to show you all what that looks like let's get my little guy right down there so there is the choice I have made we'll put him on that side of the arrow for a slower resolution um, now as we volley here Again, I keep using that word, but it's just, you know, a nice way of saying as we keep going around this. What's going to happen is we're going to keep moving our little workers. Now it goes to Luna here, and she's going to go. I'm going to move my person to this spot right here. And I get an instant wild, and I can pick whatever wild I want, and I am going to pick gold. So I move up to two gold. Now see the difference there is you'll notice is that symbol. And if they like, Luna can also read here this graveyard card and activate it and use it. And if she does so, um, and there was somebody who owned the saloon, or say that I have a card on my porch, or she has a card on her porch, and someone else uses that, um, then the owner of that property, the, the like I get the courthouse, uh, she gets the bank, we go up a gold when they activate our porch card. They don't pay a gold, but we get a gold. So that's a neat little thing, too. Um... So now I will place my second worker. I'm not going to use my special power this round for my uh, my boss. These are, we keep calling them posse. Um, they're really workers because this is called your boss, the whole instruction book. So really these are, these are your workers. These little fellas right here. My little cowboy hats. Um, oh boy. I know there are a few good places I could put this. Um, there's the hideout. Uh, it is worth saying the sheriff's office has another distinctive set of things. One, if we had a lot of influence here and we wanted to buy, you can go here and buy any property. So even if you bought property, at the end of a turn, you can buy an additional property that's there. Or here... There are two other options. You can raise or lower the rank or number on your poker card if you do not like it to try and up your chances. Um, or there's a porch card. So you really have a chance to use a lot of strategy in this If game. you change your rank... Yeah, you will see there that if you change your rank, they go by this. And if you have the highest rank and want to change it uh, higher, you will boomerang down to the lowest. If you have the lowest and you want to change it lower, you will boomerang around to the highest rank. So if you have a 5, but you have the crummiest 5, which on this is a steer, you will boomerang around to that top one there, which is a hat. So it gives you some advantages if you're not sure your hand, or you just have a card that you feel like is going to make or break your hand, and you want that advantage, you can do that. Uh, I'm liking... Man, I don't know. There's a porch card there and a porch card there. I don't know much about the appraiser. Can you read that one to me real quick there? What does the appraiser say? Gain gold equal to the VP value of the first building card you buy in Phase 4. Well, that could be good or bad but I haven't bought anything yet. However, I could just go there and pick up some instant gold. Or I could go to your bank and get some instant. And you know what we're going to do is go cheap this time and do an instant and do instant gold. So I would move my gold up one then. My other ones stay at one. My gold just went up to two. I'm waiting on the courthouse one to see if I get two more power. And that brings us, since we're waiting now, 
for Shelly to do her final move. I'm going to put mine right here. And I keep calling her between Shelly and Luna. I do apologize, guys. Alright. Now, she has just moved on the bank. She's going for the longer strategy there. And the big thing with that is that she will get two law if she wins. So, now that we have both moved, what happens is now we do what's called settling up. So, since we have not dueled, we do not settle up against each other. If we had dueled or had people on the same card, we would settle up with each other. Since we have not, we settle up in this fashion. This becomes the rival's card. The rival is kind of like, you know, there's always a gunfight, da-da-da. This is kind of like the house card in poker. So we have to settle up with Town Hall, and it goes clockwise, just like normal. And my cat has just attacked Luna under the table during the game. So now we will flip our own cards. There is mine. Oh, you got a good one. I got a five. Mine's but a hat. Mine is not the best. of Mine's a horseshoe. So he has a three. So I am fighting him. He has a three, two threes, and a four. I have a five, three, four. Uh, so while I got the instant there, uh, I didn't get anything outside of that. So I can't really complain. I, I did all right there. I didn't beat him in any other way. He got two of a kind there. Uh, the next one up is you. Oh, I got three of a kind. And let's show here. This is what we mean. I got four, four, four. Now let's show. This is what Luna means by using her hand against his. So your card becomes a three card hand. So you will play his one card against the two cards on either side, whatever property you're trying to get in hers. So see here, she went for this, and she will get that reward uh, there that she has the hourglass on, along with this reward there that is like the poker's pot. So she gets two gold and two law. So it paid oh, off for her in order to do that. Because these buildings, you'll notice, have a... Just to grab one here that's already on the table. You'll notice at the bottom here, they have a buyer's fee. So you need this influence in order to buy them. And up at the top, each has a victory point. Some industry tokens that you will use to decide what industry tokens at Town Hall you want to move where. One can only be in first place. Uh, they will have a certain amount that you can have in second and then third, but there can only be, if I remember right, one in first. The idea is you really want the one that goes with the cards you have the most in, in first. Because all this adds up in the sixth round. So you did good there. Now, the next one that's settling oh. up is you as well, actually, on the saloon. Uh, so that is you there. My card is four. Five, two is my hand against his two, three, three. So if I'm correct, he's got a pair, so he still beats me. So I don't get anything. Now, the last one here is a two, two, and he's got a... Three, so he's got a two two three. I got a two two five. So I beat him, that punk. So I get. We're gonna show you here. I'm hoping this camera's catching this. It is good. So we're gonna move this. One, two, is my waiting reward. And if you can see that down there is the pot. So we'll get two law. So that goes up from one, so we're going to go one, two as well there. So now we have three law and three uh, power. Now what I'm going to do is be looking for a card in this next phase, now that we've settled up with everything. Let's get the camera up that got lazy on us for a minute there, folks. I swear it hasn't been drinking, just sarsaparilla. 
Let's not lie, I drank a little. No, it did not, actually. The, card is, uh, the camera should be fine. It, it should not be all wonky like this. It, uh, uh, originally, when we started doing these videos for Game on Games, our camera actually died on us. When we And it's this game we actually went to review for them, and our camera died. So, uh, our camera and this game apparently do not seem to love each other all that much. But we love this game, so... Alright, so now the next phase and final phase of each round is the buying phase. Um, now the way this works again is we check the hands and that's only to make sure that we can buy. Um, we don't really, I don't think, need to do... So basically, if our hands, we don't do that against him. He is out of that one. If I remember right, that one is done against, you know... Now we decide who's get, who gets to buy a building first. Yes, yes. So who would buy the building first? Um, now, originally, that's a 3, 4, 5, so that's a flush for me. So unless you can beat the flush there... No. Then I, <laughs> then I would definitely be able to buy that building if I should choose, if I have the resources. Do I have the resources? Uh, I do have the resources to buy that one. Um, that's an auction house, but it would at least put something under me if I decided to buy it. Or, um, I could wait and try to come around and pick up this one. But I'm going to go ahead and buy that one just to get something under me right now. So I'm going to spend the appropriate gold here. And that is... One gold, dropping me back down to one. We're going to slide this one, two, and one of those, and pick this puppy up. And again, guys, this slides under your porch, and I'll show you in a minute what that looks like uh, before we do our second round so that the symbol is no longer there. And then that's on your porch. Um, and then we will replace that uh, at the end, once these are all bought, we'll replace it uh, with another building. Now it's your turn. I don't even have enough to buy this building. I have enough to buy that building, but it would wipe me out of law. So I actually am not going to buy anything this round. Okay, so you're out of buying. I'm out of buying. Done. And I'm going to be done buying as well this round, so there's no read to continue. No read. No reason to continue with volleying for buying purchases. So our little worker cowboy guys come back home. And we collect the cards. Who the had the best? Cards. I believe hand. I had the best hand because I had the flush. So and whoever I'm, has the best hand gets to move an industry piece. Yes. Now the way that works, guys, is again, if you want to take these. One thing that changes is the dealer chip here is going to go now. It gets rotated clockwise like everything else in the game. And you will see here, this is what I mean. I can either choose on my porch, and this is what I mean about the porch here. When you slide these in, you want to hide these. And just slide them on in there like so, so it's cozy. Um, so that only what this building does and all that are showing those are my victory points it's going to add, and I have two choices here, but I can only pick one of these to move. So we're going to start by going to Town Hall here and settling up, they call it. So we're going to put that uh, in first place. Alright, uh, right there. Now I could have put one of the others, because that one has more than one. That's the one I'm going to pick. We're going to pick some different people, no, different people, we're going to, I'm going to pop another building card down here where one was, put one there. oh, okay, this is this. Luna is going to put a building card down there, <laughs> that's the spot for oh, that's right, you, no, me. but one of those, oh, you. Luna already put a building okay. card down there, because she is that good, she's fast, guys, trying to keep you set up, she's, tried to, 
He's already done it. And uh, actually, Luna, you did not buy this turn. So no. your oh. third worker goes up. Yes. One of the two conditions, guys, where your third person goes up is if you don't buy in a turn. Okay, don't look at the camera. Oh, really? <laughs> I'm going to show them. So you can see here, That's it's not, not just about... I know, they get a little insight. You can't. It's not just about the card itself, but it's also about the suit. So it makes it a little difficult, you know what I mean? You can't go based just off a number. No. Oh, this is so hard, man. Uh, this is a very strategic game, I will say that. All right. Now, you, you go first this time. I'm I went first last time. I get time. to go first. I'm going to choose... I'm going to move this over oh, a little more. Is that again? Ah. And I do apologize, guys. I keep fiddling with the camera here. I'm just trying to get the best thing over for y'all. This is going to be the last close-up I'm going to go to this spot right here, and I'm going to go to the plus, so that way, whatever number my card is, I get to take that and plus one. I think that's not a bad idea, really. God. Yeah. Yeah. I am going to try to be adventurous here. Um, I'm going to try to be prosperous is what I should say. Um, did I go to the saloon last time? I don't know if I went there. I feel like I didn't, did I? We went to the instant that nothing happened. Yeah. Because I sucked at it. That's why. Um, I did get a one wild off that, but that's about it. Um, oh, crumb. I'll tell you what we're going to do this time. Is we're going to go to the bank. This is a big move. Okay, so I don't own anything. Correct. So there's no gold to no be gold. gotten there. Dang it. But <laughs> it's like I want I want free gold. Give me gold. But I'm gonna try for I'm gonna try for winning that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Alright, so my turn again. I am going to go to Ah. Where are you going? Ah. You want Yours here? instant though. I want. All right. And I instantly gain a force. Now yes. I got two forces. Now she's got two forces. Um, what is mine actually? I don't even know. <laughs> okay, one uh, of any influence to draw two building cards. You may buy one at cost. Shuffle. The card you didn't buy back into the deck, so that's actually a really good card to have. Sorry to block y'all for a minute there, I was just reading. But that's actually a pretty good card to have. Uh, so make sure that you all read these porch cards, because, for example, the Law Office one, we've used quite a bit during this game, where you sacrifice um, and another one like that, where you sacrifice one kind of ability, or one influence for another, and they can pay off. Duels especially, because in duels you have two kinds of influence. Power, if you are the aggressor, and law if you're the defender, that's for re-rolling these two bullet dice. And the winner of those gets that wanted card. Now, in the deluxe edition, you get two other uh, bullet dice, and if you order from Game and Games website, you get the deluxe edition, along with a clear wanted card, which fits nicely right on top of your player, your boss card here. So it looks pretty cool. Um, and on top of it, you also get a... You get to pick, I believe, at the start of a certain portion of your round, you get to pick a... a wild. You get a wild, a wild mark. Influence. And on top of it, it's two victory points. So you really want to win that duel. I am going to go for, oh man almighty, I feel like you got me locked in pretty good here. 
I'm gonna try my chance at the saloon again. I did bad that time, because there's no, I mean, I can't put him there. That's not really a space. So he's got to be a porch space guy. Um, my turn again. So I got my third player. Oh, you do have your third player. I got my third player. So I'm going to pop him up one there for two. And with my third player, da da da, I duel you. Oh, I knew it. Challenge you to I knew this was coming. All right. All right. You get one dice, I get one dice. Now, these are the bullet dice, by the way, guys. So you will see. It's hard to see right off the bat. There you go. There you go. So we're going to roll these. The I've had bad luck with getting threes with this. I'm not going to lie. The higher number wins by default. Oh, I got a one. I got a four. Bang, bang. Bang, bang. Man, so I got to lay down. Well, let's tell them, though. You can use influence if you want to adjust it. She would have to spend... Law, I would have to spend well, my thing power. Is, well, dueling, you always have a power. Yes. So what does that mean for here? Um, By dueling, you always have an influence. Oh, okay. That's what it's saying, right? So if I'm out, it doesn't matter. Well, it means that you always at least have one influence to use to re-roll if you want. Mm. So if you want to re-roll the one, you can spend it to re-roll the one. Mm. If I were you, I would take the re-rolling of the one. Yeah, I will spend it. I can spend any one I want. You have to spend the law. You have to spend the law. I will spend one defending. law and re-roll again. You see her just flat out trying to manipulate my dice like that? But do you re-roll? Busted. Or just me? No. Just oh, you. just me. I'm sorry. I thought that I made If I become the Look, loser, see, I can see, a three you. again. The past Come two on. times that we played duel, I've Come on threes. now. All right, now I will admit that's unfair. Well, you because... still win, so I still got to stay laying down. And that was my third turn, so... Wah, wah, wah. All righty. So you win, so you get to take... I take the wanted card. Um, I still put him sideways over my guy, just because I think it looks cooler. I feel like Bon Jovi that way. Actually, let's... Take a look at the wanted card and show you close up here. Um, so if I am a wanted at the beginning of phase three, there, there he is. If I am wanted at the beginning of phase three, then I gain a random influence. So we're going to pop him on top of this character here. Um, and phase three, of course, is the settling up phase, which is actually what we're about to do now. So I gain an influence. So I'm going ahead now and popping that there. So at least I have two money, two power, and two lob. And I'm sorry about your loss. <laughs> I actually really thought you were going to take me that time. Uh, you seemed very confident. I thought so too. That was gutsy. That was Man. a very gutsy move. Um, and this will be our last round playing this with you all. We're not doing the full game, but don't worry. We're going to explain a little bit of scoring after this for you guys. Um, we don't want to make this video an hour long, which it honestly would be if we were playing the full game. Because this is about a 40-minute game. Once you get into knowing the phases, at first it sounds a little much. But then once you actually get used to it, it actually goes really fast. So. I mean, you've seen this already. We're talking a lot, and we've still already played. This is already round two, and we're already almost done with round two. And look at how much we've talked. So that's telling a lot. And most of it's, I don't shut up, I know. Sorry, guys. So... That's basically me. I just don't shut up. Okay, so... You're a talker. It's okay. I got him. I ever. All right, so settling up clockwise. So the rival this time has a three of horseshoes. Uh, and as we look here, horseshoes are one of the lower suits. A TP. Or a, He's a three, four, five. I, well, he three, does a town four, hall. Uh -huh. um, right. Yes. However, we need to look at these. So, there he would have a, if we were at the hideout, he'd have a 3, 4, and a 2, so that would be a kind of, mm -hmm. that would be a straight. I so, at yours, because you're first clockwise, I can't do anything because of my... Yes, two of a kind and a 3. I have two of a kind and a 3. Are you serious? 
Yeah, the only problem is history beats my F and three. Ah, uh, history is a whole uh, of a steer. Do you see my agony, guys? Do you see this? You son of a bitch. So, yes, he beat me with that. Just one suit that shows you how powerful that decision is on that sheriff's office, guys. If I would have chose to go up a suit, we would have had probably a second duel, but I should have activated my card, used my third worker, and that also shows you how important worker movement is. Son of a bitch. Alright, so... Well, I can't do nothing with that. I'm correct that I can't do anything because he's dead. If it was an instant, I would have already gotten it, but yeah. he's wounded. I can't do anything with him. So I go to my next person. Yes. And that was moving my four up yes. to a five. Well, that's a smart move because you can't... I mean, that's on top of so, it. You're, all, you're the second highest hand. My hand for here is... Two five three and his would be three three two. So he's got a pair and he still beats me. What's but ironic is if you would have kept man. yours if you would have kept yours, you would have had a I three, had a, two, three, uh, four. Are you serious? So you would have had a straight so you would have beat him. Uh, so he's sneaky, this rival. Sneaky sneaky. That little Alright, well now it's your turn there. Now it's my turn. We he has three uh, one and it, he has two threes and a one. I have two threes and a one, but he has a higher two threes and a one. So I still don't get shit on this one. <laughs> it has not been good for me in the saloon. I feel like this is my guy coming in. He's getting drunk on sarsaparilla and moonshine and getting. Well, at first you right think it's gonna saloon. be easy to beat that hand, but it is. I guess someone who really isn't there. It's just part of the game, but. Actually, it's the way they do the whole game, though. It's deceptively challenging, and you really do need to use all your resources. And that's one thing I was saying in the review of this game that people, I think, were going to be surprised by is how well they thought all this out. And now you guys see what I mean. Look at how well they thought this out. We're getting our butt kicked by the rival because... I did not choose to do something I should have with my suit... Shelly was actually in a better place without raising it when she raised it in one place. Just but goes to show you. You have resolution Not always going to help. All right, so my hand there is a one, five, five, because I had raised my hand or my card number. Yes. And his would be one, five, three, but since I have a pair of fives, I at least win that. Ah. Yes. So you win. So you win two. Two fours. Power. Two power and two law. And two law. Boom. And then the last phase of this again would be the volleying for the buying phase. Um, I actually don't think that on my properties I, I would own enough to be buying. I probably... No, I don't. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I can't buy in either of them. Can't buy him because he's wounded. This one I will because I do have one, two, three. Well, you got to do the card thing with your cards. Oh, I got to do the verses. That's right. Yeah. Oh, I forgot about that. See, that's why you're here. You keep me grounded. All right. So, how do I do this again? Your card and my card versus? I believe so. We're actually going to go straight to the instructions on it because. We have not had to worry that much about it because lately we haven't been able to do this because of the way we have been getting our butts kicked by the rival. Um, so yeah, the buying a card uh, will work this easy. Um, all players compare their hands using their own poker cards in the two hands. Adjacent to the town hall mat, uh, the order in which players starting with the winning hand and proceeding in the hand order from the highest to lowest. Each card player has the option of buying one building card at a location where they have at least one posse. So your hand is better than my hand, so you already have the winning hand. Okay. So therefore, you have the option of buying is the way that works. 
when we've gone through all these, I got my butt kicked. You have the option of winning. Buying. I won nothing with all these. I'm going to go ahead and buy. Ooh, I'll buy the barbershop. Okay. Two gold. So let's take a look there at the barbershop that she is two buying. Gold, two gold and two luck. There's two gold, oh. there's one law, and one power. And we can see there the barber shop. Boom. Gives her one of the wagon wheels industry. Gives her some mining and two victory points. And its porch effects are instantaneous. And if you already have a porch card, um, if we already had one, you would actually scooch your last one up, slide this one over it, and just leave the top part yeah, there. As long as you see the top part, you know what you're doing. I get to move an industry, and because I have a wagon wheel, I am going to move it into second. Yeah, because the other one is already a mine, so that yeah. one is already good for you. So then she's already set. Building it up. So the way this works is in continuing rounds, we would continue to do this. We would keep this going and call our people back. We would continue to deal. And then at the end of this, Thank you. the way this would work is thusly. There are a few things that will deal with victory. At the end of the sixth round, uh, we would deal with the points listed. Uh, let's just grab one of these here. On the card, for example, you will see there is a number two. So say we have... Two, a four, a six, all those would get added up. You would deal with the actual industry rankings, and I'm going to show you right here on the instruction booklet. If we can please get the instruction booklet in the camera frame, which the camera is hating me today. So all of these things would be added together in order to give you your ranking, your final ranking, and of course the wanted card, as I said before, has a bonus of two victory points right down there, so that would come into play too. So all of these things would come into favor at the end of six turns. You guys have seen now how you play the game, how you do everything in the game. Uh, don't let the rule book intimidate you. It's actually much easier to play than you would think. Um, if you see a symbol, for example, that says, has an exclamation point, that means it happens then. If you see a hourglass, it happens a little bit later on, a resolution phase. If you see a cash symbol, it means it happens during the buying phase. That's all there is to it, guys. You'll learn how to play. Let's grab this box again, because this box art is fantastic. Um, Tiny Epic Western. We're going to flip this inside again. It's a little darker today. I apologize. Because I love the showdown art here. And again, look at how thick the card stack on the box is. This is actually one of the best quality boxes I own in any board game I own. And I own huge commercial, like, I don't want to say the name of, of other games. We're focusing on this game. But I own... We'll say games that most families would own uh, uh, that we grew up with as kids and, you know, played and all that nonsense that were bigger games. And um, the, even their boxes are much thinner than any Gameling Games box. They put a lot of quality into every single thing that I, I've seen by them. Uh, now, we're also going to be playing... Uh, within the next week or so to come, uh, tiny, uh, actually, ultra tiny Epic Kingdoms. I bought the smallest version of it I could. Um, we are going to be playing another one of theirs as well, actually, along with that. I believe it is Quest, uh, which was a birthday present. And I would just like to say thank you to Gambling Games, uh, of course, Scott Elms, uh, the writer of this. Excellent, excellent work, guys, as always. 
on all the stuff that you guys do. You do some amazing games. We're cleaning up a little there. Sorry if we were in your way, but look at how neatly... See? It's just amazing to me that all this stuff... I mean, that's how... I love how big it is. So you can throw this in your backpack and go over a friend's house and play this, and it, it, it just so much is in there that it's unreal. Even with the cards, I mean, we've shown you guys just four. Just four of these. There are a bunch of them. And the ones that aren't playing just flip over and become player aids. I've never seen that in a game before. So they have done a lot of innovative stuff with every one of their games. So we really hope you guys enjoyed this. We enjoyed recording this for you. Thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe. Uh, definitely be sure to give us a thumbs up. And we will see you on the next one.